Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. I am not sure yet. So I just found something, I don't know, hopefully it is good, but I think it's more on the cheaper options alternative as a small PC. So I just want to introduce you something I found when I was just going through stuff in the AliExpress. So it seems like they repurposed Intel Celeron N3350 processor, which came out like quarter three, 2016 it does have a two cores two threads burst frequency 2.4 and the base frequency of 1.1 they are saying it's four to six watt tdp this is intel Celeron n3350 on intel's website for whatever reason on the listing on the aliexpress on this computer they are listing it as a 1.6 gigahertz base in addition to that this comes with a sd card slot and m.2 2280 slot the cpu itself supports lpddr3 and LPDDR4. I think they are just going with 6 gigabyte RAM LPDDR3. So we're going to check that. Intel HD Graphics 500 is there, which base frequency of 200, burst of 650, and 8 gigabyte video max memory. So that's a computer. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the device, a mini PC portable design, <laughs> Intel inside. Sales model M2, CPU Intel Gemini Lake N3350, 6 gigabyte RAM, already odd number, and 64 gigabyte gigabyte ROM so let me grab my knife I did not open it I did not touch it I don't know anything about it we are gonna try to keep this video short hopefully I just want to see what happens with this okay so okay that I definitely was not expecting any sort of user manual or documentation turn on the TV monitor and change the video output to be HD or VGA so mini PC wall mount design it mounts to back of his uh, monitor apparently somehow so so there are some stuff in there doesn't matter the most important thing about this is this is $70 so it is cheaper than a Raspberry Pi 5 8 gigabyte RAM which is $80 and if you want the m.2 SSD slot on it this turns into a hundred bucks with a cooler it might go a little bit even higher 110 20 bucks the whole when you turn it on and everything you're using the power consumption 5 to 10 watts something around that range but this we're gonna see how it does Windows 10 is installed on it Intel and 35 we talked about it 12 volt 2 amp there's a vga output okay and there is two usb ports and micro sd slot hdmi output another two usb 2 ports power connection ethernet and a power button and they had a headphone jack so let me first very quickly open this up so yeah there is the nvme ssd slot over here i'm going to insert some ssd okay let's not push it too hard we are just going to put a 980 pro one terabyte even this is overkill but it doesn't matter Okay, what else in the box is this TV mount thing that they were talking about. So this goes in here and then you can mount this, but I'm not going to use it. This should be a 12 volt 2 amp adapter. It is a 12 volt 2 amp. Okay, what else is in here? Nothing and nothing. Okay, so give me a couple minutes. Let me wire it up. Okay, we are back. I put everything together. One more thing I want to show you. Actually, it's $56. When I bought it, that was $70. So they even went down and seems like they started from $148 or something. I don't know. This seems like it's booting. Okay, wow. All right. Kind of fast. Let's see. A few moments later. Okay, so I think I found something. I don't know, but I just wanted to start recording to show you before I proceed further. So first of all, we are booted into Windows 10, as you can see. They have a bunch of apps already installed. WPS, Office, whatever that is, and the Chrome. Whenever you want to search something, Chrome, it sends you to upsrc4u.com. And I saw two things in here, Hide Icon and SD Utility Application. And when you look at the location of these, it comes to Safety Icon. There's an app in here and SD Utility utility and hide icon if you look at it that's also here and looks like install service icon service they have installed a service or something based on this we don't have a network and i am going to stick a usb into this and i am going to take a 
copy of those files. So that's a different story now. Hide icon, I'm going to take these. I don't know what that file is. I'm going to take all of these. There's a bunch of RTL chip stuff. I'm going to leave those alone. Safely icon, SD utility. Those are Windows default stuff. I don't care about those. Those are fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do is going to the USB and I'm going to put these in there. These are the files I received. Okay, let's go to msconfig. I don't want to connect to internet and download the auto runs yet. I'm going to come back to it. Okay, so a bunch of Intel services, Google Chrome services, Intel services. This can be real, can maybe not. SD manager thing, that's also here. So if we go to services, I just want to make sure that SD manager file is the one that I just received and copied to the USB. Okay, so it's here. Okay, SD manager. The past is, yep, icon service.exe dash s. I downloaded a bunch of files. I copied it to my USB and uh, we're going to take a look at it. So far, I'm going to tell you I don't like this. Whenever you search something that they have uh, replaced it with some URL, I don't remember what it was, but we should have it in the history. Search install all.com, whatever it is. Let's connect this back. I just want to check something. If we go to the settings, so in the search engine, it's Google. When I searched something, it was redirecting me to some other site, not anymore. Also, why the time and date is not getting synced? I already set the time zone. Okay, now we got the time and date working. Test. This is not okay. What's happening here? Why there is a certificate being intercepted? WR2, Organization Google Trust Services. What's going on in here? Is it doing SSL man in the middle? What's happening? I fixed the time and date. Is this something shady going on in the Chrome? Let's try with Edge. So see, Edge is not throwing any SSL errors, but when we go to the Chrome, which now it doesn't even load, Okay, it was updating itself. So maybe now after update, whatever it was happening is not gone now. Let me see. So if we search test. So for now, it's not doing that anymore. But there was definitely something shady in that Chrome. Anyway, I grabbed those files. I'm going to take a look at it. And I don't even know what this WPS Office is. Let's go see this one. Windows Kingsoft WPS Office. Kingsoft? What's that? Like a cracked office or something? I didn't even ask for it. Why would you install an office with a crack? Anyway, sorry, it's not cracked. Whatever. It is something that they have installed, which I did not ask for, but it's a WPS office. Apparently some software from some company that I never heard of. So other than that, what else is in the program file? Cisco, that's a PAP module, are those? That looks like a VPN stuff. Let me see. Wi-Fi is there. That's the Ethernet. That's the Bluetooth. Okay. Actually, I'm going to grab those files too. Google is there in the program file 64 bit. Okay. Nothing special there. Users. Sure, Windows files, SD files. Ah, oh, that's terrible. That's the application logs. And they're logging into the middle of C drive with an SD file name. Okay, something shady going on with this computer. A few moments later. Okay, so we are back and I finished the testing and somehow even during the benchmarks, the power consumption didn't really go above 10, 11 watts. And as you can see, this is Intel, one processor, two cores, Apollo Lake, 1.9 GHz it's not 1.4 what they're advertising and here is some more information about the cpu the ram the main board the memory and it's a uh, thousand megahertz looks like it and this is the geekbench single core score and multi-core score so another thing i did because this test took forever i took a look at the files i grabbed from the computer well i take that back seems like there is no malicious stuff going on there is no malware no backdoor nothing from those files that I looked at it and WPS office seems to be another type of an office from some other company. So all that being said, remember, you can always just remove all the operating system that they are shipping it with and install whatever you like. And while the tests were finished and you see the power consumption goes down because fans are ramping down and it got really hot. So that being said, we are done here. The network, Ethernet, the Windows 10, HDMI and uh, other stuff are working fine. I am not going to wait for Windows to install the updates because I am done
done with Windows, let's go. What I want to show you is actually the BIOS and we are going to boot into the Ubuntu. I just want to see how it does in Ubuntu. Okay, I just noticed one more thing. The VGA port is really hot. Okay, so here's the BIOS. BXT notebook desktop, whatever CPU flavor, 6 GHz, 2400 megahertz. But in Windows, it was reporting 1000 megahertz. USB 3 trusted computing. TPM2. Okay, somehow there's TPM as well on the smart settings. Yeah, CPU configuration 1.1, not 1.4. That's not what's showing in the windows. So yeah, thermals and chipsets, Northbridge, Southbridge, Encore, security boots, and yeah, nothing special really. Let me just uh, boot into USB and let's go into Ubuntu. I want to make sure Linux works because the power users mostly who buy stuff like this, probably they will install Linux on it and uh, you can turn this as an alternative to Raspberry Pi and it comes with a case and everything for $56 this is $80 I just want to see if this is kind of faster but we'll see how much the difference and how much is the power consumption difference and if it, this is a viable option you can install Windows 10 it's annoying it's a little bit slow but it is usable you can technically use Windows 10 on this on this though you cannot so that being said I want to see somebody installed Ubuntu on this how things are going to look in terms of performance thermals so let's fast forward and see when we boot into Ubuntu okay so we are back so this is a pure utter garbage that's all just i have to say and as you can see this is the second time i'm booting into ubuntu and it completely freezes and there is ethernet never gets detected only wi-fi works and it just immediately after like 20 seconds of using the ubuntu as you can see on the screen it just freezes and dies okay so this garbage everything is hot super 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 hot. So what is remaining for us is to figure out how to get into this thing. We are not going to need the keyboard and mouse anymore. I think the screws are under this. Let me take a look at it. Yep, it is. So I took it all apart. There is no fan. And I've been saying why it's so hot. They just use this metal with that flimsy, tiny, miny. I didn't tear it. I just took it apart and it was like that. So that garbage useless thermal pad on this. Yeah, I'm going to definitely take that away. And they have basically all this jammed into this. I nearly broke it. Just take it out. The processor is here. There is no mark or anything on it just it says x 6 k 216 there is that marking in here this is the wi-fi card which is the caltech and that one worked actually in windows and ubuntu so that's okay but the antenna is just this two small pads connected to the sides of this plastic case nvme slot is over here and they just put a sticker a tape whatever on it so you don't short anything when you're installing it because because underneath there is like all these pads and there is also a screw that was underneath to take it out I had to take out that screw the solution was this tape basically they just put this tape on it and so you put your SSD over here that's the RAM and EMMC this is the Ethernet and the chipset next to it is actually SG243011G let me look it up okay it seems like it is Nian Yang high tech zone whatever whatever SMD transformer SG 243001 whatever this is the ethernet chipset but for whatever reason this was not working in the ubuntu image so this is the board basically to be honest it's 50 dollars, so it's not a huge deal but there are a lot of better 50 dollar boards that's out there in the back also there is the rtc battery and i don't see anything else over here this is the bias it probably the cpu processor is the tiny one from 2016 Wi-Fi works but ethernet doesn't work on linux i checked the applications again that is shipped with windows 10 but if you buy this i don't recommend using the operating system that is shipped with it just uh, install your own and don't use what they are shipping it with so there you have it i buy these things test these things so you don't have to all they have done is this i don't think this is efficient and uh, good enough for the cpu i mean it's not really power crazy or anything but it gets hot and it was going 
going up to 1011 watts so for that 1011 watts i don't think this is enough to cool that not sure but as i told you i was touching this vga part and it was scorching hot it was really hot so i guess this is how the heat transferred or something it was the case was also hot so anyway there you have it hope you enjoyed my find that's amazing find for 50 bucks so yeah don't do it all right thanks for watching see you in the next video bye for now Thank you.